Hey everyone, Chiamix here. Sequence breaking. The act of performing actions or obtaining items out of the intended linear order, or skipping required actions or items entirely. Yeah, I could read Wikipedia. Maybe you've heard of this term, maybe you haven't, but I'm sure we've all had certain parts of our favorite games where we just thought, man, I wish I could skip this. God knows that I have a lot of these. Like these terrible auto-scrolling sections in Sonic Adventure. I hate Sky Chase, I hate Sky Chase, I hate- <clears throat> Anyways, if you've ever seen a speedrun of a game, you probably know what a sequence break is. Sequence breaking, whenever possible, is an essential strategy for saving a ton of time on your video game runs. Sometimes this can be an insane out-of-bounds glitch that skips entire levels, or even allows you to go straight to the end of the game. Or it can be something as simple as getting an early upgrade by being a bit creative. But sequence breaking isn't only limited to speedrunning by using crazy glitches, and it's probably a lot more common than you think. One of the games that instantly comes to mind when talking about sequence breaking is Metroid. I don't know about you, but sequence breaking in Metroid is something that came to me completely naturally. Now, I went into every Metroid game blind, so I wasn't aware of any specific sequence breaking. But as soon as I got the bomb jump and realized you can continuously use it over and over with some well-timed presses, I was pretty liberal in my experimentation with it. By doing so, I would eventually find certain sections of the game that clearly didn't intend me to be there as early as I was, and I was able to get some nice little early upgrades. Metroid has a ton of sequence breaking, some allowing you to obtain items early or even to skip entire sections. But the coolest part about it, at least with this game in particular, is that its level design accounts for sequence breaking. I mean, if they didn't intend you to sequence break, they probably would have nerfed things like the bomb jump in future games, right? Well, they never did. Bomb jumping is included perfectly intact in basically every 2D Metroid game. Hell, even the newest game in the series, Metroid Dread, has bomb jumping. And I think it's safe to say that the exploitative nature of the bomb jump is pretty common knowledge, especially to the developers who work on Metroid for a living. So because because of this, the developers have to design their game around the fact that players can sequence break. They have to make sure that even if you veer off the old beaten path, you're still able to make progress, or in the worst case scenario, still successfully backtrack if you get stuck. Because if they don't, you can end up with something called either a soft lock or a hard lock, which is being placed in an inescapable situation, preventing you from making progress or even backtracking. The difference between a soft lock and a hard lock is that a soft lock is able to be remedied by reloading a save file or resetting the game, placing you back in a point in time before becoming trapped. But a hard lock is a lot scarier, as they're usually only able to be fixed by starting the game all the way from the beginning. For example, maybe you somehow got yourself into a room earlier than you were supposed to, but the only way out was an item you haven't found yet. Oh, and also the game just autosaved, so yeah, unless you have some kind of backup save file, you're sh** out of luck and have to start a new game. Developers purposely giving players the ability to sequence break isn't always the case though. I'd actually say it's a minority of the situations where this happens. We can't all be the absolute chads over on the Metroid dev team. Usually, the more the level is able to guide you through the linear path intended by the developers, the less oversights that may lead to softer hard locks that the game developers have to worry about on their end. That's exactly why certain obstacles exist to prevent you from progressing until you've completed exactly what the developers want you to do. That way, they can always assume you have everything needed to progress and can't get stuck. But there's one game that throws all of that out the window. Maybe at first it might seem straightforward, but once you unlock the potential of its incredibly intricate physics system, sequence breaking becomes the soul of its endgame. I'm talking about none other than the Super Monkey Ball series. Before we move on, I'd like to say that this video is proudly sponsored by Hotline Sewani. If you've been enjoying the remixes you've been hearing throughout this entire video, well, I got some good news for you. They're all available to listen to right now over on Hotline Sewani via YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Music. Hotline Sewani is dedicated to providing you with the sickest music from all of your favorite games. This ranges from lo-fi beats, synthwave, and 80s styled remixes. I'm a huge fan of all of the music over there and listen to it all the time when making videos. I've even contributed some of my own art to the channel. So make sure to check out the Pumpkin Hill, Red Mountain, and Speed Highway remixes. At the time of uploading this video, we're right in the middle of the Hotline Sewani Remix Mania Month, where you'll be able to enjoy remixes from Sonic, Super Monkey Ball, Persona, and Knights. 
In addition, listeners will also have the chance to win many Hotline Sewanee inspired prizes by entering the ongoing giveaway. A total of 95 winners will be announced on November 4th, so make sure to check out the Twitter link in the description for all of the details on the Hotline Sewanee giveaway. Let's all celebrate the amazing music from some of our favorite video games over on Hotline Sewanee. So make sure to head over to the YouTube channel, which I'll link in the description, and subscribe so you're always in the loop on the latest upload. Huge thank you to Hotline Sewanee for sponsoring this video, and with all that said, let's continue with today's episode. The Super Monkey Ball series started out simply as Monkey Ball on Sega Arcade Cabinets in June of 2001. And in no time at all, Monkey Ball would become available on home consoles as Super Monkey Ball later in that same year, luckily retaining all of its addictive arcade qualities. Fun fact, this was Sega's first ever game released on a Nintendo home console, that being the Nintendo GameCube. Yep, Super Monkey Ball helped bridge the gap between Mario and Sonic. The premise and controls of Super Monkey Ball are extremely simple. You move around the analog stick to tilt the stage, rolling around this poor little monkey trapped in a ball. Why is the monkey trapped in a ball? Well, that's for the monkey to know and for us to simply be amused at. Enough questions. You roll around, avoiding obstacles until you get to the goal at the end of each stage. The monkey even does a funny little dance as you ascend to the next level. Best game ever. Every stage is bite-sized, and usually appropriately named after the main challenge's theme. Because of the bite-sized nature of each level, these games can have hundreds of tiny little levels for you to go bananas with. And no, I will not apologize for that pun. The only catch? Don't fall off the stage, and don't run out of time. And that's literally all there is to it. You tilt the analog stick and let gravity do its work without having to press any buttons. That is until later entries in the series, but we're just gonna ignore those. The first few Super Monkey Ball games, 1, 2, and Deluxe, all essentially act as expansions to each other. There's also the recent Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, which is a remake slash compilation of those three games. They all follow this exact same formula, but add in new levels, minigame modes, and quality of life upgrades. These first three games are widely regarded as the best in the series, by kind of a long shot, and it's for a very specific reason. The robust physics system allows for incredibly open-ended gameplay, allowing for insanely impressive sequence breaking. But we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Before we start skipping it all, let's talk about the level design itself for some context. The level design in Monkey Ball is brilliant. It's short and sweet, which leads it to becoming either increasingly precise or puzzle-like in order to amp up difficulty. During a first run-through of the game, you'll most likely go through each level in a very straightforward way, how the game intends you to. Although the later levels can become really challenging and sometimes gimmicky, there's still usually an obvious intended way to finish the level. A majority of people who play Super Monkey Ball probably play through the game exactly like this and end up being perfectly content by the end. It's a fun enough game like this anyway, so I can't really blame them. But for the small percentage of people who dare to trudge forward into the mysterious beyond of Super Monkey Ball's endgame, well, I think they can expect to find something very special there. Monkey Ball makes its physics the sole focus of the game, removing almost all other garnishes most other platformers bring to the table. There are no enemies, barely any interactable stage objects, no power-up items, no upgrades. There is only monkey and ball. But the physics are so engaging and intricate that it manages to keep you hooked the entire way through. Monkey Ball is actually very similar to Sonic in some ways. You could technically call it a physics-based platformer. You build up momentum and use it to shoot yourself off of slopes, just like in the game with the speedy blue rat. But the physics in Monkey Ball take it a step further. You're also able to bounce off walls and manipulate the stage below you as you fly through the air. This, paired with a metric f ton of skill, leads to some of the most incredible sequence breaking that I've ever seen in a video game. It's here that the level design of Super Monkey Ball merely becomes a suggestion. Watch any speedrun of Super Monkey Ball and prepare to have your mind blown. Levels that you may have spent hours on just for a single successful run through, speedrunners either fly through or completely over with seemingly zero effort. Monkeys being smacked all over the stage, free falling, and landing straight into the tiny goalpost. It's pure insanity. Metroid and Monkey Ball are both similar in the way that you can perform sequence breaks, but the methods in which you do so are almost the complete opposite. Metroid's level design is engineered to account for getting items early, like I explained in the beginning of this video. But Super Monkey Ball's levels aren't specifically designed for these sequence breaks in mind. The devs designed each level, gave the players an incredibly intricate physics system, and said, eh, whatever happens, happens. While level design is present, the way it's treated by highly skilled players makes it more like a sandbox. 
all of the crazy tricks you've been seeing so far were found through lots of patience, experimentation, and trial and error. The physics heavily promotes this type of freeform play, which is why I like to call Super Monkey Ball a sandbox platformer. It's similar to how Super Smash Bros can be considered a sandbox fighting game. For the most part, combos aren't linear. It's extremely analog and requires the player to follow up in a very reactionary way depending on what the opponent does. While other more traditional fighting games have specific combo sequences, Smash Bros gives players a versatile set of tools to experiment with. And this is also exactly the philosophy Super Monkey Ball uses. I should probably mention, I'm by no means a pro at Super Monkey Ball. In fact, the highly skillful gameplay footage you've been watching has been from speedrunner Helix, was generous enough to provide them for this video. Big shoutouts to them, please go over and check out their Twitch channel which I'll link in the description. So while I may not personally be able to play at this level, there's a really amazing thing that the newest Monkey Ball game adds that helped even someone like me improve. In Banana Mania's ranked mode, yes Monkey Ball has a ranked mode, you're able to competitively fight for record times in several sets of levels. Not only is it really fun to compete against your friends or even random people online, but it does two very important things. First, it encourages playing fast and risky. While in the main game you're able to take your sweet time figuring out how to clear each level, Ranked Mode has you race for the best times against other people. But the second thing Ranked Mode does, which is probably one of the best tools for improving at the game in my opinion, is being able to race against replay ghosts of other players. You're able to scroll through the leaderboards, pick any player, and race against the replay which appears alongside you in your game. Not only does this add an extra layer of psychological pressure, but it's also able to be used to see exactly what the player did to get their time. If you pick the replay of the number one ranked player in any set of levels, I guarantee you they'll be using some crazy tricks to shave off minutes of their run. And you can see it for yourself right in your own game, as you yourself go through it. Now let me explain why this is such an amazing feature, because it might not be immediately obvious. The fact that you can see other players ghost during your game means that you can imitate their movements and routes so you can learn some of the very off the walls tricks you've been seeing throughout this entire video. Because Monkey Ball has such simple controls, there's rarely ever a moment when you're questioning the ghost player's actions. Everything you see is straightforward. Yes, many of the tricks are pretty crazy looking, but if you just do what the ghost player does, you can easily begin to see how to also perform these majestic sequence breaks. I've probably spent more time in this one mode than any other mode in the game, and I've also probably improved my Monkey Ball skills more in here than anywhere else. Super Monkey Ball is a very special game, and it seems to be making a comeback with the recent release of Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. It isn't every day that you see a game that gives you this much freedom. With its wacky level design and deep physics system, it's practically begging you to break it. Super Monkey Ball is a game that wants you to break its level design. Hey everyone, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you like what you saw, leave a like and subscribe for more content similar to this. I upload on a near weekly basis. In the comments below, let me know what you think about the Super Monkey Ball series. And to take that discussion even further, make sure to join the community discord, I'll leave a link to that in the description. And last but not least, I have to thank my amazing channel members. You all absolutely rock and are my number one motivators to keep making these videos. Again, thank you so much. If you'd also like to become a channel member for only $2 along with getting some pretty amazing perks, press the join button beneath this video or the channel membership link in the description for more details. And with all that said, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.